If you can save only one patient, that's great. But if you're coming up with a blockbuster, with a very massive drug that can save multiple patients' lives, that's a very, very nice achievement. When you see the product in the, in the marketplace, when it's working and it's changing people's lives, that's, that's an amazing feeling. And you say to yourself, wow, I did that. As we've seen today, the development of medical technology thrives as businessmen and women join forces with scientists and researchers. How's it going, Steve? Hey, Monty. Good. How are Good you? Welcome. You. Welcome Thank to you. Trendlines. In this case, it takes two to tango. Things I've heard good. a lot of uh, exciting things about this place. Well, some of them are even true, I hope. <laughs> Steve Rhodes founded the company Trendlines. They're one of the most active and successful medtech VCs in Israel and they specialize in bringing business and R&D together under one roof. So Steve, if I asked you to give us the, the pitch on who Steve is, wow. what would that sound like? Oh, that's a tough one. I'm, I'm someone who's uh, very passionate about what I do. I moved to Israel out of passion for being here. The funny part of it is that I have a history of doing things that I'm not qualified to do. Uh, I love Successfully, though. I think so. I uh, first came to Israel when I was 16,000 years ago. I was on a high school program. I was here for six months. I lived with a family. I was a freshman in college when the uh, Yom Kippur War broke out. Mm -hmm. And I felt tremendously guilty because the kids that I had been in high school with here uh, were in the army fighting to defend the state. And I was back in the States having a good time in the university. So I dropped out of school, came to Israel during the war as a volunteer, filling in for people who had been called up into the Army Reserves. It was during that time that I was in Israel that I realized that if it was so important for me to be here and to be part of protecting the country, that this is where I wanted to live. My whole career, as I said, is doing things I'm not qualified to do. So I went to being a CFO, which I knew nothing about, and then I went to being in sales and marketing, and then I went together with his friend. We established a consulting practice, which we called Trendlines. What we had seen over the years was that young Israeli startups didn't typically fail because of bad ideas or because of lack of market. They failed because of lack of business experience on the part of the founders. Mm -hmm. These are companies that were being started by doctors, scientists, engineers, farmers. In um, 2007, we transitioned the Trendlines company from being a consulting business to being an investing business. Today, Trendlines supports companies that they believe in providing technological and business development, conducting market research, raising capital, and more. It looks like we're standing in front of a huge wall of current and past achievements. Maybe you can walk us through a couple of the big, like the milestones on this wall. Sure. When Steve and his partners invest in a company, their goal is to provide everything that company needs, allowing them to focus on the task at hand, bringing good to the world. This is a device for treating adolescent scoliosis. Mm. The surgery that's done today is a very extreme. The girl, for the rest of her life, essentially walks around with a spine that's a single column. There's no flexibility at all. What our company, Epifix, did was develop a small device. The process is much easier, much simpler, and at the end of the day, the girl doesn't lose flexibility in her back. Another product that really has an enormous impact on mm. the quality of life of the people who use it. I don't know if you know what a colostomy is. People with a colostomy walk around all their lives with a bag attached like this and constantly filling with mm. material. Our company, Stematics, came up with a small device that replaces the bag. Now the person wearing this, when they have the need, they go into the bathroom, they take off a cover, and a bag that's folded up inside comes out, fills, they take it off and throw it out. Amazing. It is, it, it is amazing. The small is, things that make a huge difference. So now let's get, go over uh, to Trendlines Labs. It's our in-house innovation group. It's mm -hmm. a group of inventors who work for us, doing amazing things, inventing new medical products that address real problems. An interesting example is one of our projects named The Lioness, which has one clear goal, which is reducing the rate of preterm birth. We've just raised over a million dollars for the company, and we're going to be going into a big clinical trial to show the efficacy of the device. Let me uh, show you a, one of our really interesting companies, our Kiro. So uh, Kuro Medical developed and now manufacture device to mm -hmm. repair meniscus. We have two meniscus in each knee. Meniscus sometimes have tears. So if you have a tear, you can either, either cut the meniscus or repair the meniscus. Cutting the meniscus is not good for you. It's easy operation, but it's not good for you. We decided to create a repair device 
So this will allow them to keep the meniscus inside, mm -hmm. and this will be a huge change, a game changer. It, it's healing the meniscus instead of removing it, mm -hmm. which is just an enormous difference. Steve's vision to help Israel prosper has come to life. We've only seen a few of the game-changing medical innovations that Trendlines has helped bring to consumers, and there's a lot more where that came from. There's nothing like the feeling when, when it succeeds, when you see the product in the, in the marketplace, when it's working, and it's changing people's lives. That's, that's an amazing feeling, and you say to yourself, wow, I did that. Shalom. With us today is Ron Nussbaum, a friend. He's the co-founder of Pontifax, a venture capital that does a lot in the biotechnology world. Shalom, Ron. Welcome to our show. Thank you so much. In the past 15 years, we see that Israel is taking a lead position in the pharmaceutical and the biotechnology world. How come? Well, the Israel innovation is, uh, in my view, second to none. The quality of science that we are seeing from Yeda, from the Technion, from Tel Aviv University, and from the Jerusalem University is as good as the MIT one, the UCLA one, and things that we're seeing from Harvard. We don't have the same resources when it's come to funding and financial, but when we are looking at drugs that came from Israel, from Copaxon, Azilact, Sajaline, Rebif, and so forth, I think that Israel is a, really a great place mm -hmm. where good innovations came from. The Bible tells us that Israel will be a light to the nation, and I believe that Israel is a light to the nation in the pharmaceutical world and research. Do you think Israelis are thinking outside the box? So what caused Israelis to, first of all, research so much, and second of all, we see a success? Well, the Israeli people, or the Jewish people, is, is you know, fighting for their lives since forever. This will lead us to think smart, to think outside of the box, and to be creative. Mm -hmm. Probably not only in pharmaceutical or biotech. So, you know, in, in, in God we trust all the rest in the data. So when it's come to numbers or for royalties, when you're looking at uh, Technion or you're looking at Yeda, they are ranked top 10. You know, we saw huge change in the last 20 years in the pharmaceutical world. Once it was government, states were investing in that, and now we see a shifting. People like you, businessmen, who are investing or raising capital to the pharmaceutical world. Yeah, so I think that uh, the change is very is, is very rapid, but makes sense to me. Uh, to you, definitely. <laughs> no, m m most of the uh, the lead the leading pharmaceutical companies are led by now by either CFOs mm -hmm. or business uh, oriented guys. And that's a huge change. It's a huge change. Uh, even if you're looking at Novartis, one of the most impressive companies ever, Novartis was uh, run all, only by physicians. Mm -hmm. In the last three or four positions, they gave the CEO role either to business development guys or to CFOs. Mm -hmm. Pharma companies, like every other company, should be led by managers, not by physicians. Mm. We should let those people who do business to do business and the research to do research. Exactly. From the moment somebody, a professor, a scientist has an idea, till it gets to the market, how much money has to be invested and how much time? That's a great question, and uh, the anomaly is that there is a consensus that from an idea until the market, it will cost you something around a billion dollars. Wow. However, if you're- It's very risky. It's very risky and a lot you, of money. Because you never know if it's gonna hit it or not. Like I agree. But there's like two buts for that. The first one is it's budget for a billion dollar for a big pharma, and that's the consensus. Small companies can speed things up, can be more effective, mm. And Israeli companies know how to spin things up, how to think outside of the box. This is why we think that we'll see a massive change where big pharma will be distributors only and will buy drug from small companies. Wow, yeah, very interesting. So on the personal note, why for you it's so important to be in this field? I think it's, uh, it's something that combined two great things. When you are hitting the right spot, when you are betting on the right horse, you will make money. But one thing which is great is also that you can contribute to humankind. Mm -hmm. If you can save in only one patient, that's great. But if you're coming up with a blockbuster, with a very massive drug that can save 
multiple patients' life. That's a very, very nice achievement. Mr. Nussbaum, what a great honor, great things, and to you, our friends, the miracle and the story of Israel is in many, many fields. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us as we provide a spiritual insight of what God is doing in Israel and in the Middle East. If you want to learn more about what God is doing in Israel, make sure to visit us on our webpage and follow us on social media. Shalom and God bless you for Jerusalem.